Ever tried reading while jogging, cooking, or even juggling flaming torches? Yeah, doesn't end well. But with Audiobooks.com, you can conquer books without the circus act. Dive into over 450,000 titles, including more than 10,000 free ones. Get hooked on a bestseller, find your next obsession, or finally read that classic you've been avoiding since high school. And here's the inside scoop. Sign up today for a free 30-day trial and snag your first three audiobooks on the house. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E. All right, so before we start today's episode, I just got to give a big congratulations to Kyle Pierkowski. I think I probably butchered your last name there, Cal. But um, yeah, Cal Piakowski, uh from Retrofit Cycle Works. He is the winner of the um, Cheap Thrills giveaway contest. I don't know if you remember a few episodes ago, uh, we uh, teamed up with Walter to uh, give away a weekend at the Cheap Thrills show, which includes access to all the events and uh, two nights hotel stay, hotel stay out in New Jersey. So a uh, big shout and big congrats to Cal. He's going to bring his old man. Uh, his father built uh, like a resto chopper, uh, an old 72. Uh, and so uh, we uh, congratulate them. Hope to see them both there uh, coming up the end of this month in September here. Well, we're still technically in August today, but September's right around the corner, so we'll see you there. Now, if you're interested in supporting the podcast, please uh, check out um, patreon.com slash big truth, and you can go there and uh, you can uh, help support the podcast financially by uh, becoming a member, and each level or each tier of membership comes with its own benefits and uh, rewards and uh, cool shit, and uh, we do some giveaways, uh, we do... We got all kinds of stuff going on and a lot more planned in the works. I got to get some more stuff going back there, but I got some good ideas uh, coming up for this fall once things slow down here at the shop and I can catch up and uh, have a little bit of breathing room to do more fun shit. So uh, yeah, check it out. Patreon.com slash big truth. Now, if you are looking for motorcycle parts, you need to check out oldbikebarn.com. Um, you know, whether you have a chopper or stock bike, cafe racer, Desert said whatever, um, they got what you need. And uh, it's cool because, you know, you can search by make, but you can also search by type of bike you, you're uh, doing. And uh, so, yeah, you know, they got a chopper part place uh, section. They got a, a cafe racer section, things like that. So check them out, oldbikebond.com. And especially if you got an old Japanese bike, they got a lot of the rare stuff that uh, no, other, no one else has for uh, old Japanese bikes. So check them out, oldbikebond.com, on Instagram at oldbikebond. Now, humidity's holding out, man. And if you got a swampy grundle, a dirty dingus, if uh, if your if your uh, you know Frank's and Beans looks like it, like uh, like it, it would be um, in a uh, Woodstock documentary, then you need to get over to Manscape.com and get the lawnmower 4.0 which basically is a ball raiser. You know what I mean? There's, there's no other, no way, to, no reason to mince words. Get over there and clean that area up because uh, you don't want to deal with a hot, swampy mess and uh, no one else in your life that has access to that area wants to deal with that either. So do yourself a favor and do your significant other a favor and go over to manscaped.com and get the lawnmower 4.0. And if you use the promo code Big Truth at checkout, you get 20% off your order and free shipping. So can't, can't lose there. Um, if you have uh, a need for CBD oil and, um, or a curiosity about CBD oil and you don't know where to start because now there's thousands of manufacturers of it, a lot of it out there is garbage. You need to check out Cradle Lake Clear because they make organic CBD oil, uh, with the best ingredients through the best processes. And, uh, you can go on their website, cradlelakeclear.com and, uh, check out all the information. There's a lot of technical information there. Uh, they do shit legit. Um, you know, whether you got trouble sleeping or anxiety or depression or, uh, infl inflammation, you know, soreness, you know what I mean? Just, uh, anything like that, CBD oil will help. And you can check out, they got a bunch of different things. Uh, every time I take it, I sleep very, very well, like a, like an infant child well not the infants that cry and scream all night but like a baby you know like once you start sleeping all night and you get that heavy sleep that's that's the sleep you get uh so check them out cradlelakeclear.com um also 
you want to check out Omerta at Omerta Mia. Oh, and sorry, at Chris Cradle Eight Claire, if you put the promo code Big Truth in checkout, you get a significant percentage off your order. So go check that out. Make sure you hit the promo code Big Truth at checkout there. Um, and while we're talking about promo codes and whatnot and saving money, go check out AmertaMia.com, the most legit streetwear brand out there. Um, and they got, you know, anything you need, whether it's T-shirts, hoodies, uh, socks, fucking scarves. I, I know it's still summer, you know, but some place winter's coming. You're not going to need to stock up hats, whatever, man. Check them out, OmertaMia.com or at um, all the social medias is, is at OmertaMia as well. They also got their own app, too, so you can check it out at the Apple Store and the Android Store. Um, and use the promo code BIGTRUTH at checkout there. You get 20% off your order. So you could be saving money left and right all over the place here. Um, so, and, you know, still looking for more clothes, check out Pitchfork at pitchforkny.com. Mainstay in the punk, hardcore, and metal community for the last couple decades. They also uh, do a record label and put out uh, independent releases. Uh, you know, they had a back-to-school 7-inch series with an East Coast punk, a hardcore metal band on one side and a West Coast band on the other. They just did a new uh, New York hardcore a compilation LP. So check them out, pitchforkny.com. If you're into motorcycles and motorbiking and building choppers and riding and doing all that shit, you need to check out chopcult.com, the biggest information clearinghouse out there on the market uh, for uh, motorcycles, uh, the biggest online community. They got uh, message boards broken up by topic. They got online uh, swap meet where you can buy and sell and trade parts. They got a uh, a board with all the events, like an events page with uh, motorcycle events all around the world. Um, everything you need, go check them out at chopcult.com and on all the social media, simply at chopcult membership is absolutely free. And if you happen to be in the unfortunate situation where you find yourself in a motorcycle accident, you need to check out Law Tigers at lawtigers.com. Um, they are a motorcycle uh, accident law firm, uh, specializes in, in specifically that. And uh, they were founded by motorcycle riders for motorcycle riders. So check them out, lawtigers.com. Or go on Facebook and type in Law Tigers plus uh, your, uh, your state, and you will get in contact with the local regional office for your uh the people that would be directly handling your case so check them out go to facebook.com and uh just type in law tigers and your state so if you live in maine you'd say law tigers maine you know and that's about it and uh, you'll get in touch with your local office if you're into weird arcane shit like fucking the occult and serial killers and stoner doom metal and fucking illicit drugs and psychedelics and 1970s uh, style like show or boogie vans or choppers any of these things at all interest you you need to check out heavy and heavy's a clothing company by run by my man zach doom check him out at heavy.bigcartel.com on instagram at heavy clothing uh they got some of the most badass uh, designs that are out there so you 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 love that shit for sure um if you're looking for more uh, motorcycle parts and whatnot, or, or swag, or riding gear, or any of that stuff, you can check out my shop, Chop Ahead, at chopahead.com if you're not in the area. If you are in New England, we're a full-service brick-and-mortar motorcycle shop, so we can uh, hook up your bike, anything you need, from an oil change to a full custom build, everything in between. We do it all. Uh, we got a showroom with uh, riding gear, helmets. I mean, helmets, I don't know, with the, with the with the whatever... Uh, breaks there's been in the supply chain some some full face helmets are hard to get right now and uh, we're going into fall and that's what sucks but i got bell i got simpson i got uh built well you know whatever come in try shit on um but and uh, we'll do our best to get you something if uh, if i don't have your size in stock um we got riding gear parts we're pretty much set up with everybody so if there's something you need and you don't see it on the website just give us a call or shoot us an email at truthatchopahead.com and uh, we'll get you all situated. And if you hear back from me, just call again or shoot another email over. Uh, it's been super hectic lately. Just been running around full, 100% full bore. Um, and if you need more information on the podcast, just check out BigTruthPodcast.com. That's about it. Uh, we got a good one today. So uh, keep it locked. Thank you.
Yeah, once again, we have Liftoff. I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Big Truth Podcast. And I'm uh, stoked to have my man Tim Howley in, in the house, in residence today. It's not on the phone. And you might know him for, from a band called Fit for an Autopsy or from Tombstone Hardware, uh, First Manufacturing, uh, what's it, uh, Thrash and Throttle Podcast. Everything. He's, he's a renaissance <laughs> man with his hands in a little bit of everything in the motorcycle and music world. That's why he's a perfect fit to have on here today. And I'm stoked, uh, stoked to have you over here, man. Hell yeah. How you doing? We're broadcasting live from the third lift at Chop Ahead Customs. <laughs> I, I love it. I love this, this whole podcast setup. It's just awesome to me. It's like the most, like, I'm always like, like I've been on uh, other people's that, and, and some of them have like a whole studio and stuff. And yeah. then I, like, I feel weird, but then I'm like, you know what? Like, like. Like you, like you're gonna feel more comfortable here than if, you know what I mean. Well, like, yeah, that's the cool part about you know this whole setting is like you said, you have the shovel and, <laughs> and, and a pan and a couple evos in the background, and we're just all sitting in a shop. Which most of the time, those conversations are the best conversations. Just yeah, sitting yeah. around the shop with your yeah. friends, shooting the hanging shit. Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem like a artificial environment for, for just for some shop yeah, shop it's, talk. It's, yeah, exactly. It's legit. Yeah. It's a little different when I get like because you know. I'll do music guys or like motorcycle guys, but every now and then I throw like a weird scientist in the mix. And <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it's like, it's like, eh, you know, they're like, like, where am I? Yeah, what yeah. am I doing here? So I feel out of place. Yeah. Luckily, most of those have been, uh, well, not luckily, but just because of uh, travel and whatnot lately, most of those have been over the phone anyway, but down the road, that one will be interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's and, I, a, and I don't get no travel budgets to fly people in or anything. Yeah, you know, nah, what I mean? it, you know, eventually, eventually, <laughs> I mean, the podcast is doing well, so eventually, you will you will get to that point. Well, that's the know? goal, man. Like just to be able to 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 expand it where we could do more, like because if you know how it is, man, if you had a budget behind you to do shit like that, yes, it, 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 we could do killer fucking shit. Oh you know yeah, like I mean? allocating those budgets to to build and grow cuz realistically your podcast is your business. It's it's just another business adventure. You know, so for uh for you to allocate funds for it and you know, if it's making you a little extra cash either through sponsorships or something like that, you know, you can take it and say, "Hey, I'm going to take 400 bucks, fly this guy out round trip, have him crash at my house." and have a solid conversation for an hour and a half yeah you know? yeah no it's true and, it's, uh, and uh you know that's what we gotta we gotta get to and that's why i give uh big shout outs to all the sponsors and all the patreon uh yeah. patreon members man because uh, you guys are making it happen um i actually had it was funny when you hit me up about doing the podcast last year yeah i had a, a close friend of mine hit me up she was just like hey like i'm super stoked like to hear you on the podcast blah 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 I was like, how did you find out? Like, how do you know? Like, we just talked about this like four hours ago, <laughs> you know? And I guess it was something you posted on the Patreon. Like, hey, guys, like, just talk to Tim. He might be on the podcast or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, And, yeah. Uh, you know, that's the type of stuff, that insider information that, you know, people always want to know. Mm. That's the stuff that helps build your podcast as well because you're like, oh, wow, like I can get that info, insider information and, and know what's going on before everybody else does. Yeah, yeah. And, and just try and like um, – and have a be a way for them to have a voice on the podcast as yeah. well because like sometimes I'll say hey this guy's gonna come through you got any questions you want to ask and yeah. sometimes there'll be some really funny questions or, or good questions you know yeah. and um, you know it's just right now man um, money's a, th a thing but time is the biggest resource that's so tough Trust and me, trying to get these out regularly oh, and yeah. I'm still like. The end of the summer, like kind of like run on like motorcycle shops. We got like three, four pages of people backlog trying to get oh, bikes yeah. in to do shit. And it's like, damn, dude, I, you, you know, it's like, I don't have the money for an assistant, but I need yeah. an assistant. Exactly. <laughs> you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. Just like to help me manage well, all that's, this shit. That's what the word intern is yeah, for. Yeah, you know, yeah, telling, yeah. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, like, you know, you come in and do a little things like, you know, you'll learn the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. get free labor. Hey, any, anyone that's uh, interested in becoming a podcast and social media intern, hit up, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 hard, man. And, and you know, I, I feel you on a real level when you're talking about time. Because with me, with doing the band stuff yeah. and, you know, even the social media stuff with First, you know, that's a nine to five job. Sure. So uh, last year, my buddy Pat hit me up and he's like, hey, listen, like, are you interested in and Pat's in the house, by yeah, the way, Pat's Pat's literally sitting right Shout next out to me Pat. hanging out. We just got back from deadbeat retreat. So like, you know, we're <laughs> ripping back from, from Maine. Yeah. And, uh, 
it, it's funny because he hit me up and he's like, hey, do you want a job because you're going to be home for a while because of all the COVID shit? And uh, I was like, you know what? Why not? Let yeah. me let me see what I can do because I'm I know that I'm good at social media and I know that I do it well. So I'm like, all right, well, it's kind of another puzzle to figure out. Why not? And uh, I started doing that last August. It's been a year, but that's like I said, it's a nine to five job. Yeah. So everything else that I'm trying to do, whether it be Tombstone or my leather work or you know stuff like that, I haven't done like custom leather work and 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 you know custom pieces in over a year, basically. Yeah. Like. I've done small things here and there, but I really haven't had the chance to do it because I just don't have the time. You I know, forgot, so. and I forgot. Sorry for forgetting to mention the level. Oh, yeah, I, can, yeah, I yeah. can't even I, keep dude, up with all your I, hustles, dude. You know what so I mean? Yeah. Many things, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, many yeah. things. So many things. You know. <laughs> no, I get it, man. Same here, man. We're it, to survive in our world, yes. in our little subcultures, which are like little subgenres of even bigger. Like not not only are you part of music or motorcycles, we're like part of these smaller subgenres yeah. of those things. Yes, exactly. like you could have multiple hustles to keep it going. That's why I get yeah. the tattoo shop and I do yeah. the laser removal because you know what I mean. So I can keep everything kind of going, yeah. you know, and fucking. You know, so it's the same. Yeah, well, it's, I get it's it. when you think about it, us growing up in the hardcore and, and the metal world, you know, you realize that when you're playing in bands, that is not going to be your only source of income. Yeah. And if you want it to be your only source of income, you need to supplement all of your other income and, and do kind of small other little things and have those side hustles Yeah, so that you can continue to do that and invest your time into it. Honestly, my dad always said, he's like, look, he's like, get a good job and make money so that you can do the things that you want to do. So yeah. that's why I was like, all right, well, clothing company, cool. Leather work, cool. I know that I can make all the money that I need to to pay my bills by doing that stuff. And it doesn't, it doesn't hinder my time in the band. Yeah. You know, so finding side hustles that work. And now I'm like, I'm doing social media for first. And I just picked up a weekend gig doing social media for uh, a couple restaurants out east on yeah. Long Island, which, you know, that's just extra money coming in. Sure. Even though it's something that I, I know how to do. And I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll schedule out all your stuff for the month. No problem. Yeah. So let me ask you this because I'm 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 just interested in this position of like yeah. a social media manager or something yeah. for for another company because as someone that owns a shop and then you know I'm kind of got my hands in everything like I know I don't handle social media right you yeah. know what I mean yeah. at all because I just like every now and then I'm like oh yeah shit I should take a picture of that and put <laughs> exactly. it up you know what I mean yeah. but like what is like what's like kind of like the job description and like the day to day kind of like activities because i'm like how do you fill up a nine to five day of like social media like yeah. you know what i mean like just well, I'm so, curious you know so especially in the motorcycle world you have to keep up with motorcycle trends yeah you know and obviously we're selling motorcycle leathers for first manufacturing so you know i need to figure out all right well a lot of people are now into dinas and fxrs and the bagger thing so yeah, like the performance yeah stuff, exactly yeah. so what am i gonna do or what could we post about that people are like, all right, you know, I'm feeling this content on a real level. You know, I'm, I'm identifying with this content, you know, and it's kind of a game for me. So, yeah. you know, usually I come into work once a month. What I'll do is I'll compile all my content for the month. So I'll con say I, I want to post 45 photos for the month. I want to do on a Monday, I want two photos. Tuesday, I want one. Wednesday, I want two photos. And I do, you know, staggering days. So I take 45 photos, compile those, and then I map out, all right, you know, Monday I'm going to do, you know, I, I do every other, uh, I do every other post. I do a product post and then something else, then product post and something else. So every other post is a product, whether it be men's jackets, women's jackets, custom vests, denim, you know, anything yeah, yeah. like that. And then like once I map that stuff out and that stuff's done and it's scheduled and all that stuff like I know is going to do well, then I fill in the holes and I say, all right, well, all my stories I can't schedule. So my Instagram stories, I'm like, all right, well, I got to post about, you know, daily I would post about, you know, what new feature did we come out this week? What new vest did we come out with this week? Um, you know, what events are coming up? Yeah. Events are massive. Sure. So we just went out to Sturgis, hung out for... I think it was like uh, seven, eight days, something like that. But when we got out there, I had a schedule for every day. Every single day, I was like, all right, well, you know, Sunday is going to be Bell Brawl. Like, we're riding Saturday, so I'm going to get GoPro footage and stuff like that Saturday. 
Sunday is going to be Bell Brawl, so I'm going to get all footage that day. Monday's the Hardcore Cycle Show. Tuesday, we didn't really have a set plan. And then Wednesday was the V-Twin Visionary Show. So every one of those shows I needed to take photo and video at, and that stuff's going to stretch out for three, four months. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm not posted and having that massive amount of content, you know, for a shop like this, you can literally have somebody come in and just take photos of the shop, like hundreds of photos of the shop. And every day you could just schedule something out being like, oh, you know, we're here till six, come grab a t-shirt or come grab yeah, a vest yeah. or some, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, see, I, I get weird, man, like about it because I'm like, motherfucker's going to get sick of seeing dumb <laughs> yeah. shit, some shit, but yeah. I don't think, but it's not the case, right? If, because if people are following you, they're following you for a reason, Yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, we were just talking about it before. We gained, we gained 200 followers this weekend uh, on the first page, or sorry, 300 followers on the first page. Uh, we lost 150. Yeah. You know, so you lost half that because of whatever reason. Yeah. But you're still gaining more people. You're gaining new people. Yeah, yeah. You're always going to lose followers certain days, and you're always going to gain followers other days. There's some yeah. days where you'll lose 10 followers, but you'll gain 300. There's some days where you'll gain 10 followers and lose 300. Yeah, it's real bizarre. It's, it's very weird. Yeah. You know? But it's it's a puzzle it's literally a puzzle and i think that's why i enjoy doing it yeah and then i know some people get deep in like they they research like when the best time to actually release certain oh, yeah. content is oh, and they yeah. know that shit down to like a science yeah. like and Dude. they get it scheduled out like oh this yeah. one's gonna come out wednesday at 10 at night because it's gonna yeah. hit europe in the morning or exactly. some bullshit you know I, what I mean i do the same thing <laughs> yeah. i do yeah, the yeah. same thing i'm like all right well i'm not gonna post i'm not gonna post on my personal page after you know eight o'clock at night because there's less people on instagram yeah you know there's more people on the west coast but people on the east coast are either you know getting ready for bed or you just, know doing yeah, they're their they're eating the dinner yeah, yeah. they're done you know so um yeah, most, it just depends because like it or not most people are looking at this shit while they're at work at, yeah, yeah, at their exactly. nine to five jobs exactly, and shit you know exactly. what i mean they're like, trying to pass that time they're either in the bathroom you know on yeah, the toilet yeah. just scrolling instagram yeah 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 stuff like that so yeah it's it's a puzzle for me and that's why i think i like it that's cool man yeah you know yeah because it, it, it's like crazy because i know some shops that do have like full-time like social media people yeah like just like this type of shop like i understand it like in um like in a manufacturing type world, like, yeah. you know, like, you know, we're, we're like distributor and like wholesaler and stuff. But sometimes the shop stuff is like, it's hard to see. I think you need almost someone like that sometimes that can see it from a different set of eyes. Yeah. Where like, I'm so ingrained in it. I'm like, I don't, you know, like, I'm like, I don't care. You know what I mean? And, but they're <laughs> yeah. like, no, someone would find yeah. that interest. And I'm well, like, but I'm like I don't give a shit. This is what I see all day, every fucking day. You there's know certain I mean? dudes, there's certain dudes that, you know, whether they're, uh, they're fabricators or something like that where they'll post, you know, a picture of a small little part that they made. Yeah. And the post will do well and it's, it's decent, but you know, that's, it's not like a, a full picture that people are like, Oh, that's a cool photo. You yeah. know, it's kind of a shitty picture, yeah. but the content is good. Yeah. So like, you know, other fabricators and stuff like that, will see it and be like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Let me like that. Yeah. But your average generic person that's going to follow your page, especially, you know, for chop ahead and stuff like that, they're just into motorcycles, yeah, you yeah. know? So having a having somebody come in and not necessarily staging a photo shoot, but like having him just be around the shop, taking photos of somebody just working, working. on a bike, yeah. you know, and taking 20, 30, 40 photos that can stretch you three months. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if there's 20 photos of that, 20 photos of this, 20 photos of that, it'll stretch out forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Something through, and this is good for a, so many people probably listen and have their own business or something. It's, it's yeah. important shit to kind of hear about or yeah. to know about if you want to play the game. Cause, yeah. well, that's cause thing. unfortunately you kind of got to play the game nowadays. Like social media nowadays, social media is it's free advertising. Yeah. You know, and don't get me wrong, Instagram and, and Facebook and stuff like that are a big pay to play type of deal yeah. where the more you you're putting in, the more ad dollars you're putting into stuff, the more people are going to see it. Yeah. But if you have good good content and you're you're not being a dick on the internet, like you know, people are gonna be like, you know what, I'm into this. I'm yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. I'm gonna subscribe to what they're doing. Yeah. See, the ads are a whole different thing. I get weird about that. We don't really do do that because I I know sometimes if I see someone that says sponsored, I kind of just go oh, like yeah. scroll oh, right yeah. past it. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? But you know, I don't know. It's a it's a, it's a funny world, man. Well, business wise, they say that somebody needs to see your stuff seven times before they buy something. Oh, really? That's like, yeah, it's like a psychological thing, hmm. you know, that it's, that becomes a constant in their brain, 
you know, where it's like, oh, I'm seeing this all the time. Yeah. It's if, you know, if so many other people are, you know, buying from them or so many other people are subscribing to what they're doing and they like the product, it's got to be good. Yeah. You know, so yeah, as yeah. soon as you, you get that popularity down, you know, even honestly, man, even if your product is dog shit, it'll still sell. It's yeah. still yeah. going to sell. You know, I mean, dude, look at Beats by Dre. They're not the best headphones out there. They're no. decent, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but they're $300 headphones when you can get headphones for $100 that are way better. Yeah. You can either go, you know, Shure or Sennheiser or something like that. Yeah, like yeah, us yeah. in the audio world, we know that. Yeah. But it's branding. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get, you know, popular people to wear your stuff or be seen with your stuff, with your yeah. product, it doesn't matter if the product's good or not, as long as, you know, they believe it's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, it's true, man. Yeah, it, it, and it, it's it's uh you know same could be said in the chop world. There's sometimes where you, some parts, oh, yeah. some companies do better than others, and it's like well, you know there's better stuff. Oh cheaper, yeah, but you know, well, dude, you know. how many companies now in the the motorcycle world they just order their stuff from overseas, slap their name on it, and just resell it for absorbent or, or you know exorbitant amounts of yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's kind of crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all for the hustle. Yeah. But be honest, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like and that's why it's tough like for for me like um we it's tough man because I'm like trying to be everything American made as much as I can yeah. and it gets hotter and hotter to do that. Yeah. Like by the year it gets hotter. Yeah. And it's like um even like like our oil tanks, we make custom oil tanks and I'm mm -hmm. the one making them. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'll get slammed with orders and I got to make like 20 of them. And yeah. I'm like, dude, each one of these made one by one by fucking hand here. You know what I mean? And it's like, I get it when, you know, I'm never going to be able to expand that, those oil tanks unless I find people that I trust that I can have work here and yeah. bang them out all day for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, or or, you, or you I have limit to work. You're, you limit your work. I limit the work. You yeah. Know? And, uh, or, you know, I can't go full bore on advertising because if I got an order for 200, if I got 200 orders, I'd be like, I, I can't do anything for the next month and a half. Exactly. You know what I mean? And exactly. Like, and there's, you can see there's a million things going on in here. It's, yeah. it's a madhouse open running yeah. a shop, dude. It sucks. Yeah, it's well, awesome, I, I but think, it sucks. You I know think what I mean? your brain and my brain work in the same way where like, you know, we always want to do something else that's really cool as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like we get scatterbrained and we yeah, want to go yeah. out and like, I want to do a podcast. I want to do leather work. I yeah, want to do yeah. a clothing company. I want to do a band. I want to do this, yeah, that, yeah, the other yeah, thing. Yeah. And then you get to the point where you have no time and you're like dividing all your time up into little increments yep. in the little things where like I learned to say, all right, well, I'm going to put everything on the back burner except this one thing. And I'm going to focus on this yeah, one yeah. thing. And once you get that one thing up to the point where it runs itself, then you're like, okay, cool. Now I can start on the next thing. Yeah. You know, like with tombstone, I had, you know, so many ups and ups and downs over the last eight years with the company. Cause yeah. either I was on tour or bad business dealings or something like that. And, um, you know, it got to the point where I was like, man, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Yeah. And this year because of COVID and you know, all that stuff, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take it. I'm going to do kind of like a last hurrah. And I, I worked on it. I stopped doing the leather work. I stopped doing the podcast. I, you know, I was still doing the first stuff, but it got to the point where I was like, all right, well, let me focus on the tombstone stuff and get it back on track. Yeah. And now it's like, it's running itself. Like, you know, I'm not getting a crazy amount of orders, but I'm getting a decent amount of orders per week. And all I have to do is just go into my garage, pack stuff up and get it out every Saturday. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm shipping, you know, 500 orders out a month or, yeah, yeah. or a week or something but, like but, that. And the thing is the good thing with like, if you are just doing a clothing company, yeah. if it gets to a point where it gets to that you can even get yourself less involved and get a, a fulfillment yes. company and then just yes. have all your designs go through the fulfillment company. Yeah. The hard thing here is that some guys orders an oil tank and a t-shirt. Yes. So I can't have the shirt come from some weird fulfillment company yes. and then freaking do the yeah. oil tank or they yeah. order like a, a weird part and a thing. Yeah. And, 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 and that, that's where it turns hard, but yeah. that, that, that's where it gets hard. But like, it's cool. Cause once the clothing stuff gets to a certain level, like then it makes more sense for you to kind yeah. of step out of, doing the hands-on shipping and well, that what's, stuff. What's funny is that I, I worked with a couple fulfillment companies and ended, I ended up going back to doing it, doing it myself Yeah, because it got to the point where I was like, all right, well, you know, I'm losing out on say, you know, $4 per order. 
Yeah. You know, and, and after a while, it's like that adds up like a hundred orders. That's 400 bucks. And no, it's like, sure. Yeah. You know, that is another run of t-shirts. Yeah. You absolutely. know, if that's one, that's 50 shirts in one design. That's yeah. 400 bucks. Sure. You know, so it's costing and it ends up, if you look at it that way, it ends up costing you more money because that $400, those 50 t-shirts, those 50 t-shirts at $20 a pop are going to make you two grand, you know, mm. or no. No. Well, yeah, we, it, what, what, however much yeah. yeah yeah i think i think no maybe <laughs> well i got a calculator yeah, right yeah, here yeah. on my phone we could 50, do. 50 times two, two or yeah 50 yeah, times be, 20 that should be right that should be two no 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 it's a thousand bucks yeah I'm, i didn't I'm, even have to yeah t- my brain doesn't <laughs> yeah, work yeah. it's a thousand bucks but yeah so like you're you're losing out on an extra six hundred dollars now yeah yeah so but just, here's the thing you know the not being devil's advocate but now say fit for an autopsy on tour yeah all year yeah then it's like but then and the and yeah. tombstone starts to blow up but then 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 it would make more sense but yes, how exactly. it is now is it yeah if you got the time to go do that yeah. on saturdays then that's exactly awesome. yeah if i was doing if i was doing like 100 orders a month or something like that like yeah. then it'd be way different i'm like sure, hey yeah. like i don't have the time for this yeah, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. know doing 10 20 30 orders a month i'm like i'm oh, okay yeah. with this yeah, that's you know good yeah yeah man so well tell me uh, you know Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, Tombstone Hardware. I know it's your clothing company, but like, yep. what's kind of like the the you know the story behind it? And- so basically, what I wanted to do in 2013, I, uh, I the band that I was in the world we knew broke up. Um, we wanted to basically, I, I wanted to stay home, and like I was thinking about going back to college. I was 24. I was just yeah. like, ah, whatever. And uh, I just started riding motorcycles like two, three years before that. And at the time, I wasn't very involved in the motorcycle world as I, as I am today. And um, the thing was, I, I wanted to start a clothing company that made clothes that I wanted to wear. And nobody was doing that at the time. Like yeah, you had, yeah. like Rusty Butcher started around the same time, but they were just doing leather stuff. You know, the, you had Dixon starting around at the same time, but like Dixon was just doing flannels and it wasn't like it, you didn't have as many clothing companies as you do now. Yeah. So I just wanted to make stuff that I enjoyed wearing. Sure. And I was like, I made seven designs with a friend of mine. A friend of mine did the, uh, all the designing for the, the t-shirts and stuff. I was like, Hey, I want, you know, a skull and, and this, and you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of snowballed into this thing. I was like, you know what, why not? And I grew the page to the point where it was like 20 grand. And, um, or 20,000 followers or something like that. And, uh, it was, uh, it was a blast. Uh, you know, I, I made a lot of friends from it and then it got to the point where we started touring a lot and I just couldn't keep up with it and, yeah, you know, no, all sure. this shit. And, you know, now I'm like, all right, well, let me see if I can get it back on track and, you know, start to party with it. Yeah, man. And it, you know, and it's like tough, like, but it's, but it's good to have that for when shit like this happens and, we don't no one expected to yeah everyone two weeks or everything back in two weeks or three weeks or whatever oh, no one expected yeah. it was gonna be a year and a half right yeah, exactly so, so it was good to have that uh something to one to occupy your time and two yeah. to bring in some income you know because you know when a band's not working they're not making money and yeah. there's only so much merch money out there you know oh, what yeah. i mean and, and uh you know you so. can't just you can't turn around for a year and a half and say hey like every week be like buy our merch buy our merch yeah, buy our yeah, merch. yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. it gets to the point where you look like you know, you're just you should only have grabbing. to say it seven times. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> seven exactly. times. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, and it, uh, it it got to the point where you know all of us sat down. And we realized, we're like, man, like we're definitely not going to be on tour for a while. Yeah. And um, you know, because we had we had planned we we released a record at uh sorry released a record in uh, when was it October of 2019? It was like October 25th or something like that. And then um we toured on on that record in the states then we went to europe in the beginning of uh 2020 and then when we got home we had like two weeks off before we were supposed to hit the states with diarda's murder as well because we did europe with them and then straight into the states and um dude we played one show we got to philly we played the philly show and they were like all right go home yeah, and we realized that the next eight months that we had planned of touring was pretty much like out the window. Yeah, yeah. At least you get the tours on the record a little bit. You know what I yeah, mean? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like we got we got one full U.S. and we got one Europe tour, which was cool. Yeah, you know, and we had a blast with all the bands that we toured with. Yeah. So, uh, 
you know, that was cool, but it was kind of a bummer not being able to, to fully play that record. Sure. Yeah. yeah. How, do you, how, you know, this is a, I don't know, just an interesting question because like you guys were starting to fucking blow like fucking, oh, yeah. like you guys were on like the rise, man. Like, yeah. you know, like seeing you everywhere, you know what I mean? And, we're trying. No. And it was cool. Like, cause you, 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 you know, you guys were doing like s smaller tours and bigger tours, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and uh, like, do you feel like, do you feel like there was like a, killing the momentum of oh, that you know five thousand percent dude like you know we had we had so many things planned and and what's cool about being in the band and and the band that we've we've you know all kind of created like it, you know we have two dudes that are, are basically running the machine and driving the machine yeah and, but that's like any you know, band yeah, you need you a, have one or two guys to us, really run it the yeah. rest of us are the wheels yeah. you know and uh, as long as the wheels are greased and, you know, us four doing our jobs like the other dudes, like the, the top two dudes are just, you know, they're up front engineering, you know, you know, uh, driving the, the, the machine. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's kind of cool being in a band full of guys that, you know, are, are like minded and just want to kind of just grow and grow and grow and hit everybody full force. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you guys play a, an array of shows too, like, in, yeah. in, which is good because you, like, like you said, like, what I miss. Like when I was younger and first getting into shit, there wasn't as many bands or as many genres. Yeah. Even, even you know yeah. what I mean? Because now there's so many. Think about how many fucking genres of metal oh, there I, are. I know. And then how many genres of punk there are. Yeah. How many genres of subgenres yeah. of hardcore there are. And a lot of them cross over, but a lot don't. Don't. I don't. Yeah. yeah. But but when when I was younger, you'd go to a show and there'd be like a metal band and a punk band and yeah. a hardcore band because there wasn't enough of everything. There wasn't enough bands to go around. And I felt like you guys did a kind of like an array. Like yeah. you guys re touched, you know, reached out and touched a lot of different subgenres of the yeah. scene or, or subgenres of fans which is which is smart man well if, i mean look that's what hate breed did and oh, look where yeah, the fuck they exactly, are man exactly. you know what i mean like the, they know, play any show like you know what yeah. i mean like and, and that's that's that was the hustle you it, know it's so when you think about it uh, about you know how many different genres there are and when you think about all six members of our band we all come from the same but different backgrounds yeah you know yeah. so like our drummer uh Hosey and he's from puerto rico he came up here at 26 years old he's like i just want to play in a band yeah yeah you know and uh he's just like i gotta in order to do that in order to play in a, a you know a better band and and you know kind of explode and and go out and tour i gotta move this you know to the yeah. to mainland like i can't you know it, it's it's hard to make it in puerto rico sure it's hard to like get yeah. in a breakout band yeah. out of and then you have pat who like grew up in the the new jersey and new york hardcore scene you have will that grew up in the new jersey and new york hardcore scene i was in you know uh, i was on long island i would go to shows in the city all the time metal and hardcore shows so um you know you have all of us from the same worlds but like you know, in 2003, yeah, yeah, I was going to Children of Bodom shows and I was going to like Swedish death metal shows, yeah, you yeah. know, where Pat in 2003 was just going to hardcore shows. And yeah, like, yeah. you know, when he was, you know, younger in like the, the 90s, he was going to, to go see Morbid Angel and shit yeah. like that at, at either Lemoore's or like something like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's kind of cool when you have all of us talk about our experiences and the shows that we've been to and the shows that we loved. And we want to tour with our heroes. We want to yeah. tour with, you know, that's why we'll go on tour where it's like, all right, we just did a tour in 2018. I think you came to the show at the Palladium. It was us, uh, Hatebreed, Obituary, Chrome Eggs, and Terror. Yeah. You know, was a, yeah. And it was just absolutely insane. Being able to tour with all those bands, we all look up to those bands. Like I was seeing Terror when I was 13 years yeah, old yeah, on yeah. Long Island you know, hear him be like, oh, man, the last show that they, they played, like, some dude got stabbed. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. hear, you know, when yeah, you're a teenager. All, all the shit, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. you know. And then, you know, going to see Obituary and, like, yeah. hanging out with Trevor and all the Obituary guys and, and stuff like that and Ken, like, they're all awesome dudes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've toured with so many bands over, you know, across every genre. Yeah, yeah. And, uh that's what we want to do. We want to tour with everybody, like yeah. everybody that we like and every band that we look up to, we want to tour them. We yeah. want to hang out. We want to play shows, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and we will also want to get bigger. So, you of know, course, we'll, we'll yeah. play, we'll yeah. play whatever. Yeah. Well, that's why it's crazy, right? Like you start seeing it a little bit more here, but like Europe with all those crazy festivals that are oh, like, yeah. like, it'll be like uh, Iron Maiden, Danzig and like 
terror. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, you know, yeah. like weird, like just weird. I mean, and plus 200 other bands, you know what I mean? On the oh, same, dude. The same thing. Those, you know? some of those festivals, man, like we played at walk in. I remember, uh, we played right after, um, it was like, or maybe one or two bands after, um, Steve Harris's British lion. Yeah. Which Steve Harris plays bass in Iron yeah, Maiden. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like, you know, it's kind of funny playing on a show where it's just like, okay, you know, that we would never in a million years be on a show together. Yeah. You know, but this is kind of cool. Yeah. You know, same thing with Eperfest. We played in Belgium. We were talking about it before. You know, it was us. Uh, Hatebreed was headlining, but like Slapshot played. Yeah. Napalm yeah. Death. Like, you know, we played with Napalm Death and like all these yeah. other bands. You know, we, dude, we would never play on a show with Uli John Roth. They yeah. used to be in the Scorpions, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. played a festival yeah, with him. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, that's what, it, it's so cool. Yeah, like, that's the cool. That's the yeah. cool stuff. We were supposed to. Uh, my little side band there, American War Machine. We were supposed to be on it, the last one, but yeah, you know, fucking e- everything Eperfest? shut down. Yeah, everything shut Dude, down. Dude, Eperfest is is a good time. Yeah, it's definitely a good time. We did, uh, you know. I got to see firsthand a lot of those fests when I went out on the road with Blood for Blood on their last European tour, and we did that one. Um, Oh, I can't even remember where. It wasn't the Czech Republic one. There was another one that was like, it was funny because it was like Blood for Blood, but then all these like death metal bands. It might have been maybe Metal Days. Yeah. Maybe, you know, something like that. It was yeah, in this like just, weird little village, like village. like a gypsy like village. And like the, the I just remember the, it was so fucking funny because the townspeople didn't want anybody coming into the town and they kind of like. It might have been Rockstat then. It might have been. Because Rockstat's in Romania. We played that festival. It was us and Opeth. Yeah. And like that was, I mean, Does you it, know. what was the, what's the venue like? It was outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think that was it. It then. was outdoors. It was outdoors. And it was like, it was, it was in a park, but like the mountains were like, were on either side. Oh no, no. it wasn't there then. But yeah, no. I, I'll have to talk to Ian and figure out where some of those things were again. But it was so funny, man. Like those European yeah. fests are like the best. Yeah. And what's cool is like, you get to meet people that you've never met before. Yeah. That are in bands that you either look up to or something like that. Sure. Um, Like meeting Nurgle from Behemoth and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like that dude, when he's in costume, he is, uh, I, that dude is evil incarnate when he's, yeah, in, yeah. when he's in full costume, man. Like I walked up and I shook his hand and like he did the way he stared at me. I was just like, I was like, you are definitely, you are just Satan himself. Yeah. I was like, I am not religious at all. I was like, you are the devil. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, like Bobby Boucher's mom, like you are the devil. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, uh, I heard that they're like awesome dudes though. Oh dude. Is like, there someone we yeah. knew worked for him and said they yeah. were one of the best they're bands super to work nice. for? Yeah, they're yeah. super nice. It's just like, you know, the, the, when when he's all done up in, in makeup and yeah, stuff yeah, like that, yeah. the persona that he Yo, gives sure, off and yeah. the energy that yeah, he gives yeah, off yeah. is so fucking awesome. It's you like know? weird. So like I was never really into them, but then I went to go see him because At The Gates played and I really like oh, At yeah. The Gates. Oh, yeah. And uh, on that tour, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And fucking, uh, and fucking uh, their stage show, it just blew me away. And it's then amazing. I had, isn't it weird how sometimes there's bands that you're not really into and then you see them live and then you feel like you have a new understanding oh, of them yeah. and then you go back and re-listen to it and you're oh, like, oh, yeah. wait, this shit's fucking you're good. You're like, you get it. I get it yeah. now, yeah. yeah. And I was like, the amount they put just into their stage I show, love, you can tell I how much it, it like, oh, they yeah. take it fucking serious, when you know what I mean? We've played with them, we've played with them a couple times and um, I mean, every, I love every second of it. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I was never really big into, uh, I was never really a big Kiss fan or like, yeah, you yeah. know, any bands that had the big theatrics. But when I got into, when I got into metal and got into death metal and stuff like that, like there were a couple bands here and there that I'd see that I'm like, holy shit, that's crazy. Yeah. When I saw them, it was just a different story. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I saw them live for the first time. Uh, I think it was. I want to say it was 2006. I think it was Sounds of the Underground. Okay. And um, dude, I I remember watching them and and in my head I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. You know, cuz that's when they were still doing the Slave Shall Serve song, like like, you know, blasting that song all the time. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I left that, I really felt like I was at some like something bad and I oh, needed yeah. I needed to like cleanse myself. <laughs> I was shower. like, yeah, I was like, oh man, like, so, yeah. uh, just fucking you know, then you but, see bands like Watain and stuff yeah. like that, they're throwing pig's blood on oh, pig's yeah, blood yeah. onto the crowd and like <laughs> I remember the first time I saw anything crazy like that was uh uh Ozfest 2004. I was 15 years old and uh Otep had a pig's head yeah. on a mic stand. Oh, she yeah. literally just put it 
like grabbed it and just slammed a pig's head onto a mic stand. Yeah. And I was just like, that's real. I can smell that. Oh, that's yeah, fucking yeah. disgusting. Yeah. But well, it blew my mind. Sure, yeah. You know? Well, um, did you ever go see Bad Luck 13 ride extravaganza? I, I never <laughs> I never saw Bad Luck. Oh, they, I was, they, I was they, a little too young. Like yeah, whenever yeah. whenever they would play like Hellfest or something like that. I was just too young. Yeah, okay. Um, you I know. saw them at Club Hell, and they had a yeah. pig's head that they were throwing around. Like, but in it's a, way different when the pig head is involved in the show, and you're in like a 200 person room. Uh, uh, yeah, that's exactly. a whole different yeah. fucking. Experience. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I've yeah. seen bands that have thrown fireworks and yeah, stuff like yeah, that yeah. into the crowd, and yeah. I mean that that's just a different experience, yeah. you know. Craig uh, from uh, well, he's in he's in uh, uh, Agnostic Front now was talking about he met the dudes from uh, Watain um, at one of the European festivals, yeah. but they were like Slapshot fans. And he's oh, like, really? he said it like freaked them out because they, like, they were like, hey, man. But they came up to him and he said they were the nicest guys, but they still had all the blood on them. And he goes, dude, <laughs> they smelt. They were the nicest guys, but they still smelt of oh, like smell blood. Awful. Like yeah. they smelt awful. Like, yeah. you know there's, I mean? there's definitely there's definitely a couple bands that, that we've toured with that just, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I'm I'm definitely not the nicest smelling dude on no, tour. No, 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 no. Nobody no. is, but. Yeah, but if you're covered in pig's blood. Yeah, you're, there's you're definitely a couple bands where, you know, you walk into a backstage room. Yeah. And immediately you're just like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, Who yeah, the yeah. F- Whose fucking clothes are these? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But yeah, how did uh, how did how did Fit for an Autopsy come together? So uh, it's kind of funny. So Pat and Will started the band back in 2007, and um, you know, there's a couple. Uh, obviously, there's eight million member changes before sure. we got to the point. There's always where we're at iterations. Now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they hit up Nate because Nate Johnson, you know, from Turmoil and and Deadwater Drowning and all that stuff was, you know, a friend from New Hampshire. They were like, "Yo, like, let's start a band. Let's do this." So. Mm. You know, they started recording, started writing, doing all that stuff. And then it got to the point where when I, I joined in 2013, you know, and they had gone through a couple guitarists and whatnot. And Will got to the point where he was like, hey, listen, like my recording career is like booming right now. You know, and he's right now he's literally one of the biggest metal producers in, in our genre. Yeah. Like he's the guy. Yeah, yeah. And um, it got to the point where he's like, look, like I can't tour anymore. Like there needs to be a guy that, you know, can tour like a full-time dude. And, um, you know, they had a couple guys that, that toured, you know, in, in his place, but, um, will, you know, was still writing and recording and doing all videos and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, when I left or when my old band broke up, Pat hit me up like two months later and he was just like, cause we, you know, we were mutual friends from, you know, the hardcore scene and uh, he hit me up two months later and was just like, Hey, uh, I know you're not touring anymore. So like, you're going to join fit. <laughs> and I was just like, the fuck I am like, no way. <laughs> and yeah, I, like, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like, I'm done touring. Like yeah. I just lived in a van for like the last six years and it didn't go anywhere. Like I'm fucking good. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm, I'm out on that one. And uh, he's like, look, I'm going to send you the pre-production stuff that we have for Hellbound." And this is the the first record, you know, that, that I, uh, that I was like, you know, kind of on. Sure. And, um, he's like, we have the pre pro stuff, listen to it and then get back to me like after the weekend. And I listened to it. And after the first listen, I called him. I was just like, all right, fuck off. Like I'm, uh, I'll be in Jersey in a couple weeks. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just so good. And I was like, holy shit. Cause I was a fan of the band before that. Like yeah. the band was really good when they came out with process of human extermination I loved it. I, I was like, this is really good. You know, I was, I was a fan, you know? Sure, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I went out to, to Pat's house when he was living in Jersey, hung out for a couple, couple days, learned some songs, went out, uh, with them and, and kind of had like a, a tryout run. And after like two practices, they're like, all right, you got the job. Cool. You know? And, uh, you know, from then, we, you know, we, we changed singers a couple of times. Nate left and, you know, we had a couple fill-ins at the time that didn't really work out. We had a kid that came to Europe with us that so was just definitely way too young to, to be touring and just, you know, was a little green for what we were doing because yeah. we had, realistically, everybody that we toured with or everybody that was in the band was well-seasoned sure. at that point. Yeah. And uh, we were in Australia, and I was just like, man, I was like, How, do I know anybody? Do I know anybody, You're like, singer-wise? And I remember, I was like, there's this kid that I ride with that I hang out with back home. Like, you know, what about him? And he's sung in bands, and, you know, they, they kind of, they, they give me shit about it all the time because I had known this kid for, like, months and months, or not months, years at that yeah, point. Yeah. And they're like, why the fuck have you never brought him up? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So that's yeah. how Joe got into the band. Sure, and, yeah. You know, we needed a bassist, and... um 
you know, Pat and Will were friends with Blue, who plays in Dysentery and stuff like that. So, like, he was doing like death metal festivals up in, you know, uh, Boston area and New Hampshire and yeah. stuff like that for years. So, um, that's how he joined the band. And it's just like everybody kind of came in in certain yeah, ways. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, after years and years, now we're at the point where, you know, we are that well oiled machine and we're just kind of hitting the every single brick wall that they put in front of us. We're hitting it head first. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, coming up, there will definitely be, obviously, it's, you know, eventually it's more music, more touring. We just announced another tour in January that, um, you know, where we announced a headliner with a bunch of friends bands that were like, all right, this is our first tour back since first tour in the States since late 2019. It's going to be January, February of 2022. Yeah. It's going to be two and a half years we are hitting this as hard as fucking sure. humanly possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, especially with you don't know what's looming and if there's going to be more fucking craziness. Because yeah. yeah. writing's a little bit on the wall that there could be. You know what I mean? And it's, it's like, oh, it sucks, man. And, yeah. and everybody's going through it, and it's it's cool to see bands starting to play shows again. Yeah, and like get a little bit comfortable. But I I just hope that nobody gets too comfortable to where they're you know. They're shutting down tours six months yeah. from now. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, and it's different now too. There's like, there's a lot more restrictions like on stuff with touring now. Like, yeah, you know, you know, and and it's like, um, you know, like uh, Rancid and Dropkicks just did yeah. some shows, and I had friends in both bands, and they were like, "Yeah, they come out to the show." They're like. We can put you guys over here, but yeah. like no one can come well, to the back. Yeah. They're, they're like, we can't even yeah. go into each other's rooms. Matt from Rancid hit me up and was just like, hey, like come hang out. Like, you know, we're, if you want tickets, like he's yeah. like, but I can't hang out because yeah. we're in a bubble. And I'm like, yeah, Damn yeah, it. yeah. Like, that's that's what House of Lars was. He's like, we're in a bubble. We can't yeah. do anything. It's, yeah, it was kind of funny. Crazy. The the way that I, I kind of roundabout met that dude is um, so when I first got the job at first, I was in charge of like influencer management and I still am. Yeah. And um, it's just finding people that have a big Instagram following that's just like, hey, I'm going to shoot you some product, take pictures of it, put it online, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was funny because Matt had been following us for like a long time and we never followed him back. And I'm like, I'm like, how did, like the guy that ran the social media before us, I'm like, how did you not know? How'd you miss that? Yeah. Like, how'd you miss that? There was a couple people like that. It was like him, um, one of the dudes from Necrot, like there was a, a couple other band guys that were following first and i'm like my guys like did these dudes are in like good bands decent yeah. sized bands you know so it was kind of funny i i hit him up and i was like hey man if you ever need anything like just you know just throwing it out there and uh he's like i appreciate it you know six months later we came out with these riding jeans and we have uh we have these kevlar jeans and uh he's like hey man uh can i, can I get a pair of those jeans yeah, <laughs> and yeah i was like yeah, yeah of course he's sure. like all right cool i'll send you a bunch of ranches merch yeah yeah so i sent him the jeans out and he sent everybody in the office some merch That's so cool, all yeah. of us have rancid shirts and yeah, hats yeah, yeah, and yeah, pins yeah. and patches yeah. and all that all stuff. The, all the stuff yeah. yeah so it's cool you know that's the cool stuff about that job where it's like you know if i can give somebody a vest that they're super stoked on or if yeah. i can give somebody a pair of jeans like that that they're super stoked on and they're going to post about it 500 times business wise. It makes sense. Yeah. You and, know, and, and just, yeah, I know 100%. And it's not even like, like a shady slimy thing. It's like this guy legitimately, it's, it's like if someone was like, fuck that shit. But then you were like, no, here's $5,000. And yes. then they were like, yeah, yeah no, exactly. like they legitimately like yeah. the product and use it. Yeah. That's all like to me above the board and fair game. Like, yeah. like, like <laughs> Roger from, from AF, like, on the on the did you see the New York um, Godfathers of Hardcore? Yeah, yeah, of course. He's wearing a chop head hat and yep. the whole fucking I thing. I know, I know. And I was like, <laughs> Ian was at the point where he's like, I had to tell him to take it off sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? But he's a friend, and he just repped, and he lo yeah. he loves it. You know what I mean? Well, and it's like I didn't pay him for that. You know, yeah. but and I actually felt self conscious about. it. I was like, dude, he's wearing it so much. I feel like people are gonna think I paid him to fucking do it. I was like, no, it's just my brother, my exactly. boy. You know what I mean? Well, like friends <laughs> should support friends like that. Absolutely, friends should, should definitely yeah. be, and especially like. You know, he has a platform. I have a platform. Yeah. And if you support a company, it's just like, yo, I want to make sure that the companies that I like do well. Yeah, of course. You know, so in the back of his mind, he was probably like, yo, I'm going to wear a yeah. chopper head shirt because, yeah, yeah, or a chopper yeah, head, yeah. head hat because, you know, I like this. This is my homie. This yeah, is my yeah. dude. You know, I'm going to support him and I'm going to show course. everybody about it. Yeah. And that's, that's how we do it. And it's like, uh, literally, you know, a lot of the people at the beginning 
when I have sponsors, like I just trade. Like yeah. I'm not getting. It's not like I'm getting. You know, there's there's a couple that pay, but of some course. of them are trades. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Because they're old friends. Like yeah. you know what I mean? And, and but um, but you know, always like. I never understood like where people were weird about like supporting other people because it's like you bring someone else up, it brings everything up. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? Like it, it's like you 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 everyone can come up and there's yeah. room at the table for everybody. But when people get weird and shit, yeah. like it's oh, like, yeah. all right, well that's well, you're not someone I really want to be involved with business exactly. wise or anyway, you know what so, I mean? Because it's, it's a character flaw, you know? Yeah. So like <laughs> me and Pat have a mutual friend um down in Texas that does a podcast. Uh it's Fast Life Podcast, Jace. Okay. Yeah. So his podcast is massive you yeah, know and i just yeah. met him a couple months ago at a friend's you know house like right before my friend's wedding like they were riding through they were doing texas to to maine and stuff like that yeah and um you know i i sh i shot a message out on on facebook and i was like hey does anybody do podcast editing because i want to get my podcast bigger yeah and he turns around and he's just like man he's like you know shoot me a call and we talked on the phone for an hour you know hour hour and a half and he's like look he's like the the realistically the more everyone helps each other and the bigger that this genre gets everybody's gonna eat yeah you know and no, everybody exactly. eats yeah. you know whereas uh, you have guys that we work with in you know even bands even yeah. bands there's certain bands that are so cutthroat they're like you know they don't want to help anybody out yeah but what sucks about that is just like hey if the genre gets bigger everybody everybody, gets bigger. everybody benefits yeah so why be a dick about it? Why try to sabotage someone else's business? Why try to downplay it? Listen, I get competition. And if somebody's a dick just for no reason, then sure. Open put, season. Put your foot down, yeah, open yeah. season. I open 100%. Season. Yeah, yeah. But like if, if there aren't reasons to be a dick, why are you going to do that? Yeah. You no, know? It doesn't and make, it's just like he said, like, yo, everybody's going to, if we all work together and everybody skyrockets, we're all going to eat. Yeah. You know? And, and 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 it's like you said earlier off mic, like w before we started, like you know the the uh, the shoulders you step on on your way up, or the shoulders yeah. you're gonna step on on your way down. And it's it's what it's like, I'm and everyone's gonna remember by. that, like, yeah, because it was like you were being a dick, and now this everything got bigger, and now you could come on tour with us. Yeah. But remember when you fucking did yeah, this? Exactly. Sorry, bud. You know what yep. I mean? I can't tell you how many times, like, you know, we've turned down tours where it's just like, I I never want to tour with that band again. Yeah. You know, like that band made me feel like a total piece of shit. Like I was not even human. Yeah, that's lame. And dude. it's just like, dude, I don't want to tour with you. I remember yeah. what it was like touring with you, and I just don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know? And at the end of the day, it's like, this isn't like Elton John level fucking yes, shit. Dude. Exactly. We're like in these listen, like sub genres. If I dude. was touring with Metallica, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, listen, you can call me whatever the fuck, fuck you, you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, you, you're care. putting me in front of fucking 70,000 exactly. people. That's a little different. I don't yeah. care. When know. we're all playing rooms of like a couple thousand or whatever, yeah. that's a little. A couple weird. hundred. A couple hundred. Like, yeah. I've, I've been treated like utter dog shit from guys that are headlining and like selling out, not selling out rooms, but like. They're drawing maybe 400 people. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's yeah. there's been bands that we've toured with where, like, you know, they themselves, as a headliner, are drawing 200 people. Their direct support's drawing 800 people. So it yeah. looks like the room's filled. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's a 1,000 people here. That's crazy. And yeah. obviously those box office numbers go towards the headlining band. Yeah. But when that direct support band leaves... Half the room's gone, yeah. More than half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got 150 people sitting in that room. Like, you don't get to tell me yeah, yeah. that I can't go to the bathroom. You can't. You don't get yeah. to tell me that, like, I can't use the backstage bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Go fuck yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, I mean you know, just pettiness is like whatever. Yeah, you know? it, it's, it's so... It's so unnecessary. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? And uh, I just, I kind of, I kind of just want to make sure, like, hey, just don't be a dick. Like, th yeah. those are literally rules to live by. Just yeah, don't yeah, be yeah. a dick. Be yeah. cool. Yeah, and yeah. everybody will have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It's To me, it's like, uh, it's so common sense that it's like, it sucks that you even have to talk about it with yeah. people. And I've, I've had yeah. this conversation on and off mic with plenty of people in, in you know, in different genres of the world. And yeah. it bothers me more. I don't know why. Like if I was, if I walked into like some like 
consulting company or some like financial management company and someone's a dick in there. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But it bothers me more when it's someone involved in one of like our subcultures. Oh yeah. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? We're all from, of we're all in this. We're, fucking, we're from we're the same this, world. You know we're what I cut mean? from like, the same cloth. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, why, yeah. why step outside of the box and yeah. why be a dick? And yeah. it, what's funny to me also is that you now have people that are growing older, right? That, listen to hardcore bands and and listen to the lyrics and we're screaming the lyrics of certain hardcore bands about equality and yeah, treating yeah. people nice and yeah, not yeah, being yeah. a dick and everybody's like yo we're all from the same we're all outcasts yeah yeah to being like you know these fucking dickheads yeah, that yeah. you know that are like in their 40s and 50s it's like they turned into what they were against that, yeah that yeah. that group of people that they were against in the long run it's just like yeah. ah bro there's I'm a lot like, of that going know. on in a lot of different ways in our like yeah. in our subcultures like people grew up one way and now they're now they're like mainstreaming it a little oh, bit. Yeah, and it's like, dude, when did you when did you fucking flip the flip the coin a little bit? <laughs> exactly. There, was, you know, being anti government and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. Now that you know that everything that they post yeah, is, yeah. is pro government yeah, or pro yeah, one yeah, side. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, bro, come on. Yeah, I stay out of all of it. Well, yeah. I don't stay out of all of it. That's what happens, and I aggravate people, and I'm like, I don't fucking whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever. Bro. I just make sure I do it on my 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 thing, not yeah, on the exactly, exactly. job page. Exactly. You gotta keep it <laughs> keep it to your personal. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah, but you know how it is, dude. Like sometimes, like your personal and your business stuff, like is so intertwined that you can't it really, really does. It does, you know? Yeah, because that's the thing. Like even you know, I run a motorcycle page and stuff like that, and like a, a lot of people in the motorcycle world, you know, think a certain way. And I'm just like, guys, like I remember when my dad was telling me stories about you know people in the '70s and '80s and like bikers and like yeah. shit like that, like. Yo, bikers used to be so fucking anti-government back oh, then. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck fuck the government, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Fuck the police. Fuck yeah, the man. Yeah, like, all that yeah, shit. Yeah. And now everybody's, you know, everybody flips the script. As soon yeah. as they hit, like, 50, they're yeah. like, nah. You know? I'm yeah. like, come on, bro. I don't know. And I think it's maybe because, I don't know. Like, I know I I, I, I got some years on you, um, just age-wise, like, but we still stay in the world. Yeah, of course. And we haven't gone into regular world yeah. too much. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, you know, my life is still motorcycles and tattoos and, and dumb shit. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and music. And music. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, it's so it's, you know, it's, I kept those ideals, yeah. you know, but I, I think I didn't, I didn't keep the ideals because I stayed in this shit. Yeah. I stayed in this shit because, because I kept those exactly. ideals. You exactly. know what I mean? And it was like, yeah. you know, I still feel that way. Like when yeah. I go, like I, have anxiety when i go out even into like when i have to go to like target to get supplies for the yeah. tattoo shop or something exactly. i'm like i'm like oh like i, like I don't want to have to go deal in the regular yeah. world it sucks yeah and it's not anything like made up it's like a literal like this real like oh fuck i don't yeah. know you know what i mean but it's it's, it's like, also that stigma of like how we look how we dress yeah. you know how we carry ourselves and stuff like that as as you know uh, as as you could say, outcasts. Yeah, you know. Even though that's become more mainstream, it like, is. It really know, is. Yeah. I still remember when a tattoo on the neck made meant like, don't fuck with that dude. I, seriously, you know. Seriously. Now it's like kids' Fa first yeah. tattoo, face Give, tattoos, my hands and my, my hands. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is now that people are getting face tattoos, and I saw the best meme ever. Uh, sorry, the best meme ever. Um, where, where like they were showing some of like all like those like Xanax rap kids. Oh yeah. And yeah, their yeah. face tattoos yeah. and it was like and then they show people uh passed out at a party and got their <laughs> the face drawn shit. on and it's like yeah. the same shit they, for the they most look part. like they look like uh like the desk in a high school. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. High school yeah, desk yeah. or or a bathroom <laughs> wall yeah, or some yeah. shit. You know. Um but yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I think that it's just it all comes down to and it, going back to the whole you know, ideals thing. It's just like, hey, man, don't be a dick. Yeah. You know, that's it. You know, yeah, everybody's yeah. everybody's included. Everybody's welcome. Like, you know, it's just like hardcore shows. Yeah. You know. Nah, and, and, and Except dickheads. No except, no dickheads yeah, allowed. Yeah. No bozos. Yeah, the problem is like the even the last, I don't know, like – I go to like a lot of shows and I go to, a, I'll go to, a, I go to a lot of metal shows and like, uh, you know, I'll go to death metal and, and whatever genre of metal shows, but I'm not as active in the metal scene. Yeah. So I don't know how it is, but in yeah. the hardcore scene, the, 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 the divisiveness we're seeing in mainstream society, yeah. we're seeing that in the hardcore scene. It's starting. Yeah. It's starting. And I didn't to know brush if it was over. Doing, is it, is it doing that in the metal world um, as well? Like, I mean, I, I guess I haven't really been to a show. Yeah, it's in, hard to tell. In a yeah, year yeah, and a yeah. half. So like, but even you know, just like but, the chatter online yeah, and stuff. Yeah, like, still, yeah, like you still get guys that, I mean, 
me personally, I'll see friends that are, are either in the motorcycle world or, or, you know, the metal and hardcore world where like now people are, are becoming a little bit more outspoken on, on certain things and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm just like, listen, I, I think everybody's entitled to an opinion. Mm. Just don't be a dick. Yeah. And it, it all boils down to that. Yeah. Well, you know, and I try to uh, make a very, um, I tried to make a post that was very neutral in tone. Yeah. And on that same lines, like yeah. you can believe whatever you want, but, and we can still be friends. Of like, course. And then I got all kinds of people being it, dicked it, and jerked yeah. off and dick, dicky about it. I'm like, yo, yeah. what the fuck, man? Well, and then, and so then like, <laughs> it's think, think crazy. Of it this way. Think of it this way. Uh, circling back to the social media thing. The reason why social media does so well is because everybody has a voice. Yeah. Everybody's voice is technically heard, you know? So yeah, or seen, when, yeah. yeah, exactly. So when we were kids, you know, all of our parents are like, you know, make sure your voice is heard. Like you want to be, yeah. you know, don't, don't just stand to the wayside. And we were always taught like, you know, you're important in this, that, and the other yeah, thing. Yeah. And now it's to the point where like people have that, everybody has a soapbox. Yeah. So people will get up on that soapbox and just spew bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, shut yeah. the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it's people, man. It's yeah. a, and that's the problem with people is like there's yeah. all kinds, you know. Good, good, you got good, 7 billion plus people yeah, in yeah. this world, and that means that there's 7 billion plus opinions. Yeah, and – and they a all significant, suck. A significant <laughs> amount of them are people are dicks. You know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But that just makes like when you meet the good people, that makes it even better. You Dude, know? What I, I mean? love it. You I know love it. I mean? When you find, when you find people, and it, it's kind of it, you kind of get taken aback by it. When you find people that are just genuinely nice. Yeah. You know, people that are you know you're walking down the street and you're like, oh my god, I love your hair, or you know, hey, that's a no, that's an awesome shirt. And yeah. they're not being a dick. They're not yeah, just yeah. fucking with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not um, being sarcastic or ironic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but but we, I would do it. But see, but but like for me, busting balls is a term of endearment. Uh, like, same thing with me. You know I'm what I mean? For, so it's the same. Yeah, yeah. being from from Mass and, and in, being from New York, from New York and, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the Northeast is just built different. Yeah, it is. You it know, is. we our our term of endearment is go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. laugh. It's a funny thing. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Or if you tell that to somebody in Texas it is on oh yeah 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 yeah. um but yeah it's it's when you come across people that are just genuinely nice yeah it it's it's kind of heartwarming man it's it's kind of it gets you to that point where like wow like you know the world isn't total dog shit sure yeah you know yeah and it it always makes me not not like jealous but it's like something to aspire to you know what i mean it really is because you know i don't know like if i had to explain like in general I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy, but I yeah. just have a short fuse. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, a lot yeah, of, yeah, I, know yeah. a, I know a lot of dudes, and, and yeah. you and me both have yeah. a lot of uh, mutual friends and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. That Same shit, man. They, they're, they're the best people in the world, and they just have that short fuse. Well, you know what it is? It's all based on respect. Of course. Because if, if, if I'm out and I'm being respectful to someone and they're not, I, oh, it just, it just flips a switch. 100%. And it's like, all right, I'll go in a complete, like, fuck you. You know of what course. I mean? So, so then people take... And they only see that side because yeah. that's the more loud side of yeah. things. So they see that and then they're like, oh, this dude must just be a fucking dick yeah. all the time. And yeah. Well, it's like, no. Okay. like, But it's also good because then it keeps people away. You know yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I've noticed that the, the louder I am and the more New York that comes out. Yeah. The more New York that comes out is definitely like, you know, oh, wow. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I want to yeah, stay yeah, away from yeah, this dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you get your loud. I mean, especially like me and Pat on tour. Yeah. You know, Pat's from Jersey. Yeah. I'm from New York. Yeah. Me and him just feed off of each other. Yeah. Especially in 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 live settings, and we're in the middle of nowhere in the country. We're in fucking Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, and I turn around and I'm screaming from the van into the venue, "Go fuck yourself!" Yeah. 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 You know what's the what's the deal? I mean, even check this out. I'll touch on this, and 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 Pat over here will laugh about it. (laughs) So we went down. So we're friends with Mark from Lexington. Uh, Lexan makes uh, the the comms for the helmets. Yeah, great dude, awesome fucking dude. We went down for his uh, his bachelor party down in Myrtle Beach. A bunch of these dudes rode down. I drove the van down with my bike. So we're riding around. We're hanging out. <laughs> and me and Pat, we literally work together. And then after work, we hang out. Yeah, you know. So we're with each other all yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, so me and him just bust these ball, each other's balls constantly. And and and. and- People just walking in don't understand like the shared history of it. They don't because, get it because busting balls is such an art that it like 
builds off. Yeah. Like, it'll build for years of oh, like yeah. inside jokes of yeah. ball busting that, you know, if someone oh, yeah. walks in and they don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about, exactly. but, but you guys don't even, you know, yeah. I get it. And yeah. there was, there was a dude down there that, that went to Mark and, and, you know, now we're friends with this dude. He turns around, he's just like, yo, like, is there going to be a problem? Like, <laughs> did Pat and Tim hate each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, and they're like, no, they're literally best friends. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just the way, the way we talk to each yeah, other. yeah. yeah. No. Where uh, you know it, it's it's a term of endearment. It's, Absolutely, it's it's, uh, it's the way you talk. It's the way that that you can get, you can not get in. You can say the worst possible things and not get under someone's skin. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a, a different level of respect that you have for certain people. Absolutely, and uh, and that's like a like a earned yes type of thing oh like, yeah so you come in, yeah. that's that's where it gets trick tricky for people because yeah. they think they can come in and do it and be like yeah the fuck are you what yeah ex ex exactly Boom. like if somebody yeah. talked to him a certain if somebody talked to him the way you talked i talked to him and vice versa there yeah. would be a fucking massive problem yeah yeah and the yeah. same thing with my band guys yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. know like if we're on tour and i hear a venue guy talk to my band guys a certain way yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing. Like Pat loses it. Yeah. He's just like sh immediately will shut that dude down. Yeah, yeah. You know, just yeah. because it's like you don't talk to him that I can talk to him that way. Yeah. You don't talk to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's like if you had a kid, right, and you're yelling at your kid, and some random stranger started ta yelling at your kid, yeah, you'd yeah. knock him the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'd yeah. knock don't yell at my dude. kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't yeah, yell yeah. at my fucking kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, don't yell at my fucking brother. Yeah, yeah. You know, what um what's going on with the uh, with the podcast um. I know, I know you had a little bit of a hiatus, but yep. um, yeah, it sounds like you're ramping back up. Yeah. So like I enjoy conversations. I enjoy yeah. hanging out with friends. I enjoy talking about life, talking about stories. <laughs> stories are, are hilarious to me, Yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I like hearing about that stuff, but I'm on the opposite side of it. I'm always the one like doing interviews and being that figure and being that, you know, person that people want to listen to. Yeah, yeah. So I want to give that voice to either my friends or other people, you know, so that they can tell their stories. Yeah. You know, and I, I started it last year. I did four episodes and it, it went off really great. But uh, I literally start, like I did, I put out my fourth episode and then the week after I started working at first. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like doing the nine to five thing and having to get up at, you know, it's an hour to work, an hour home. Yeah. By the time I get home, like I don't want to do anything. No, I get it. You know, you so it. <laughs> now it's to the point where I'm like, all right. That's what, we're here on a Sunday afternoon and you're coming. It, it, exactly. I'm at my shop. You're, yep. you're coming from a, from work, you know yeah. what I mean? And we're yeah. doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's the only time we can do it. It's like, exactly. <laughs> you know, get it done, get it done. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's cool to be able to just you know talk with friends so i, I yeah. eventually I, I do want to ramp it up to where it's like all right i'm putting out a couple episodes a month you yeah know, just for fun it, sure, you know, it's yeah. not like a it's not like a money grab it's no, not gonna no. be like i'm not trying to be tom segura making yeah, you know yeah. Yeah. you know hundreds of thousands of dollars These guys, like that. there's like Dude. The, the the weirdest thing about podcasts is that it's like you said everyone's got a voice now yes and anyone can and uh, uh, equipment is yeah. fairly affordable yeah and so a lot of people can get in yeah. different levels of degrees yes. of quality of one, yes. both of, of content and also sound quality and yeah. whatnot. But it's very easy to rise, you know, above like most of the fray. Yeah. But then there's like this big, huge jump. Oh, like, yeah. Like a lot of like, you know, and I'm not saying this to, to, to brag or anything because literally this is, a, I'm not, no way am I anywhere near being able to live off this podcast. Yes. But most episodes chart in the top 20% of all podcasts. That's awesome. So, which is good, a good place to get to, but to get from 20% to 10% oh, is dude. massive jump. Well, it's, it's just, and like then fans. from the 10 to 5%, it's oh, yeah. massive jump. And then yeah. to be in like that Tom Segura, Joe yeah. Rogan space, it's oh, like yeah. nearly impossible. Of course. You know what I mean? So, so like we have, we have a couple friends that are, that are in bigger bands and stuff like that, that, you know, they're trying to make, um, they're trying to make it to the point where like they're selling out amphitheaters. Yeah. Yeah. But they want to make it to arenas. Sure. Yeah. So like, but you always got to have that. Goal exactly. Or you're not so, gonna, but it's, it's fucking hard. Yeah. You know, and these dudes are explaining it to us like, you know, on a real level. And obviously I feel it because I'm in a band, you know, trying to make it to, you know, a couple steps behind them. Yeah. You know, so them trying to jump to the arena th or sorry, to the, the not arenas sorry they're they're selling out arenas and amphitheaters they want to jump to stadiums yeah 
I mean, dude, going from a 15,000 cap room, selling out a 15,000 cap room to selling out 45,000, yeah, 40, you know, yeah. football stadium, you know, with at least with the half half stadium or something like that or 70,000. Yeah. That's a fucking massive jump. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of people, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money, that's a lot of moving parts and it's hard. Especially now like cuz it seems like So like <laughs> Like, like, no, like, how did fucking Metallica do that? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, like, cause like, how do like, like, cause well, they metals, did it, they did it early. They did it early. Did it's it early. different time. And, yes. and they had the thing, the benefit of social media, not really being there yeah. because people had to be at events. Yes. You, have to, you want to see so, the band. You can't just watch it on YouTube. You, you have, have to be that. there. You have the, the, you have that. And on top of that, you didn't, it, it wasn't oversaturated. Yeah. So like when you were, you had bands, you yeah. know, but like those bands that did well regionally, Somebody would pick them up and, you know, say, hey, I'm going to sign you to a seven year developmental yeah, deal yeah. or sorry, so a seven record developmental yeah. deal, you know, where it's just like, I mean, they did that up until like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. And then, you know, it got to the point where there were so many bands, because like you said, with the podcasting equipment, a kid can go to Sam Ash right now and get recording equipment for like a thousand bucks and put out a quality product. Oh yeah. It's so crazy. you have all these bands that are coming out with like decent quality music, you know, right out of the gate. And it's like, all right, well, you know, things just got oversaturated. Yeah. Same thing with touring. Like there yeah. was so many tours for such a long time. And like, you know, when people are like, Hey, like I, I want to start touring. What do you, what's your advice? And I'm like, don't, <laughs> you know, cause it's kind of like a little thing. I'm like, dude, I'm like, stop. You know, so, yeah, yeah. I don't want any more bands. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. No, I, I want it. the amount of bands to shrink yeah, yeah, so that the bands that are doing well get propelled way more. Yeah. No, you know? I get that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it just seems weird now. F like with like, you know, metal and stuff like that. It's, it's harder to like break out because like, I don't know, like, you know, it just seems like, I don't, you know, I don't, this is, this is dating, but I don't know what kids are into now. Like this, yeah, it's yeah, weird, yeah. dude. You know what yeah. I mean? There's a lot of weird shit out there. It's yeah. it's hard. Like even, even being full fledged into the world, like it's hard to find what people are into and the trends yeah. that people are into. Yeah. Um, but Hey man, it's, it, it, you got it. You got to find it at some level. It does. Yeah. Dude, I, I would say too, I was surprised when I went to that behemoth show, I was like, where'd all these motherfuckers come from? There's like, like. Like yeah. people listen to that. Like oh, I'm like, dude. who the fuck are all these people? Where they come from? Like, cause yeah. I've never seen these motherfuckers at any show, yeah. and I'm in like my town. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. it's crazy. But There's, I think they just have like certain bands have like cult like followings yeah. where they'll come out and follow them like through the region. There's a and lot stuff, of bands know? like that where they'll just they only these people will only listen to five bands. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, they won't expand. They won't go to shows. They won't do this, that, and the other thing. All they'll do is they'll go out. They'll listen to these same bands. And the only way that they find bands is if those bands tour with the bands that they yeah, already listen yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. They don't actively search music. Yeah. You know, so it, it gets hard, man. It gets real hard. Yeah. And that's what it seems too. like with everything that could be cool to help with the oversaturation, it gets tough. Like, for example, like if you listen, like say, you know, I feel like Spotify does a decent job of like, creating playlists for you yes. based on what you listen to. Yeah. And most of the time what they throw in, sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I yeah. go look it up. I'm like, oh, this is fucking good. And I like yeah. it. You know what I mean? Um, but sometimes it's just too much. And it's like, what is all this? You know what I mean? Like you don't even know what to look you yeah. know, for because there's so much content out there now. You yeah. Know? It's, yeah. Well, that, with anything, everything, everything, you know, it's, it's a flash in the pan, yeah. you know, and, and if you don't find something to stick to, and ride out you don't find that wave to stick onto and, and ride out yeah you're you're literally just gonna you're gonna pop in and pop out yeah there's been so many bands over the last 15 years of me doing this 15 20 years of like i've seen bands come in for like a year and then they're out yeah they're like literally done yeah you know and yeah, um unfortunate. you know the, the the faster you come in the faster you go out yeah you know and i've seen bands come in and like literally right out of the gate they're like headlining you know, tours like Summer Slaughter or something like that. This is back in the mid 2000s. Yeah. You know, and they come in and it's like, oh, this band is headlining. And then a year and a half, two years later, they're done. Like yeah. straight done. Yeah. And uh, it's, I'd rather the slow build. Yeah. Because I know that the slower we build up is that this is the slower the fallout is. 
Yeah, and the, and the more you retain. Yeah. Because like, because you're building like fans that are invested almost. Yeah. Whereas like some stuff like that's like a flash in the pan. It might be a fluke, and then yeah. all kinds of people like them. And then they don't come with anything else, yeah. and then it goes and you yeah. know whatever. Like, yeah. It's always been like that kind of music too, oh, though. Yeah. 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 Especially with pop music. And yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, you get people that are in for a couple of years, and then they're out. Yeah. You know, they they get in, they make their money, especially, dude, culture vultures, culture yeah. vultures. Oh, yeah. You know, especially in the motorcycle world and the Any music world. world. Yeah. They'll come in, make their money for a couple of years and then cash out. Yeah. And then go to the know? next thing. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it kind of sucks when you see people in, in the scene that don't, um, they don't invest time into the culture. Yeah. They don't invest their time into stuff like that. You know, even with us going up to Maine for this trip and coming back here, it's just like. You know, I wanted to go up there. Like, it's not an expense trip. Like, we're going up there. We're spending our own cash. We're hanging out, doing the thing. We're just chilling. You know, and yeah. and that's that. You know, hey, I'm investing my time in in order to help the culture and like go out and like do campouts and do stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I know that there's like you know 20, 30, 40 dudes that are in that just bought their brand new Sportster, or brand new Dyna, and you won't see them next year. Yeah. You're not going to see them any time yeah. at any other motorcycle event because they're going to come in, they have their fun, and then they get the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we'll call them tourists too. Like yeah, tourists, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's cool. Yeah, as long as they're cool and respectful about it, yes. and they know, you know, you know, ex- some some people get a little high and mighty right out of yeah. the gate. And I'm uh, like, yeah, who the fuck are you? Let's yeah. Listen, except for those guys that yeah. rev their fucking engines at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> hit the rev limiter. And yeah, you know, yeah. it's just like, fucking come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, some people, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of, uh, substances going around that fuel, fuel, <laughs> a lot of fires, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, yes. That's well. part and parcel for, for any motorcycle type event. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, unfortunately, no one's in, in, invented a uh, soundproof tents. Oh, there, there you go. Like if that dude, would be a good if somebody hit up first if, manufacturer and get, Coleman, get 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 that going, man. If Coleman for is the motorcycle industry. Oh my god! Imagine <laughs> if Coleman or uh, uh, was it Ozark, uh, Ozark, whatever the fucking yeah. tents are called. If they figured out a way to soundproof tents, yeah, to where they fold it up properly. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I had yeah. to wear earplugs. Yeah, I wore earplugs to bed. Yeah. I was like, ah, I'm, I'm I'm done. I'm old. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm like you know what? I'm like ah, I'm good. Yeah, no, I remember, man. We used to go fucking nuts all the time, man. It's, it's 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 that's what used to be the funnest part about motorcycle shows was, was the general lawlessness. Yeah, because that was a lawless yeah. crowd. You know of what course. I mean? And, of course. And, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's, things change sometimes. Or, yeah. But yeah, so what do you uh, so anything going on with the podcast that you plan and when bring it back, like uh, anything else that uh, you just something like you're just going to bring it back to do stuff a little more consistent, but just yeah. more for fun. Like. Yeah. So like what I plan on doing with it is like, you know, I put it out through tombstone and stuff like that. So yeah. like, you know um, it's, it's just another Avenue for tombstone to make a little extra cash sure, or whatever. Yeah. So I might do a little bit of merch. I might do a little bit of this, that, and the other thing, but yeah. you know, I'll probably just end up hitting up friends of mine saying, Hey, come on, let's, you know, Let's just shoot the shit for a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. And then you can go home. Or, yeah. you know, I mean, most of the time it's probably going to be via Skype. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, so you can do a video element to it? Yeah. I, I really want to do a video element to it. Yeah. You know, because if I can do, if I can, you know, take my streaming setup, because I stream on Twitch sometimes too. Okay. Uh, if I can take that stream setup and I, ha- I can have my camera and their camera side by side and we could have that full conversation, I'll do that all day. Yeah. You know, because I've been toying with that. I like, I just do the traditional audio only. Yeah. Um, and like, I know when you do things online, like if I, or, or f- through the phone, it's a lot easier to do like the video stuff. If you, if you're Skyping or zoom or, or whatever thing you're using. Um, but it's hard when like here, you know, set up the yeah. cameras and then now you got to really edit and sync up the sound yeah. and you yeah. know, so I'm, <laughs> that's, that's when I need somebody, you know what yeah, I mean? And, it's hard. And you, cause I need, cause that's when like I can edit this cause I don't yeah. really, the trick to editing is to not not have to edit you know what i mean like exactly. unless someone says hey really can you take that out yeah. i because i'm not good at editing like, yeah. but i can do it i'll but i do yeah. it in like garage band you know of what course, i mean you know i use audacity yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm not paying for shit like yeah you know. yeah yeah but uh but yeah so it's like the same type of thing but you know it, it, you know it is what it is but like i feel like when you're on youtube you, 
you know, when I just have like the audio with like a logo, it's not yeah. as good as some people actually want to watch. For some exactly. Reason, you, know? you know, it's, it's different when you're, when you're watching and you can get a feel for body language. Yeah. yeah. You know, a conversation is, is, is the conversation is good and the content's good. Yeah. But like when people can see how sincere you actually are, when you're talking about a subject that you're passionate about, you know, that's, that's a world of difference. Sure, yeah. You know, and then it, it, it is good too. Like, because sometimes when I do things on the phone, like I'm not a phone guy. Yeah. And then when I'm not seeing somebody, it still feels weird. Like it's still like decent conversations, yeah. but it's not, you know, it's, maybe I should go over to Skype for some of these things. Yeah. It's, it's definitely fun. And, and, you know, setting up, setting up your camera to the point where it's like, all right, well, you know, I'm using Streamlabs and Skype or zoom or whatever it may be. Um, you know, if your camera is set up at the same time, all the, like, you know, or sorry, the same way yeah. every time, it's like, yeah, it's whatever. You make a little corner for yourself in the shop or, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're, I mean, mine's in my bedroom. So yeah. like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's easy. Oh yeah. What, um, what, uh, what plans you got going on with the band? Like, I know you, you guys can record anytime soon or you got something uh, in the works. So we do definitely have new music in the works. Um, can't really elaborate on that too much. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, the usual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there definitely will be new music next year. Yeah. Um, there's definitely going to be, obviously we just announced that tour Yeah. in January. It's a, you know, our first headliner in you know, almost three years. So you know, that's going on. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a, trust me, 2022 is going to be a fucking machine. Yeah. And it, it, we are literally, like I said, we are hitting every single brick wall that's put in front of us head first. Yep. So I, I feel bad for anybody that's just like, Oh no, you can't do that. Yeah. 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 Steamroll. We're steamrolling right fucking be through like, them. Fuck. I can't. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Dude. You know, the good thing about your podcast is too, is that you're, you're on the road a lot. You know, a lot of people, you have access to a lot of people, but you're also a good conversationalist and people are going to feel comfortable around yeah. you. So you already got a leg up. It's not like walking in. It's like, for me, it's always weird. Like, especially when I've had some of the science guys on or something with yeah. people I don't know, like yeah. doing these like cold calls and like, it's hard because a lot of them have just been 98% of the podcasts have been like friends of mine, you know what yeah, I mean? So exactly. it's kind of easy to jump in. But when you get some of the ones that are like, like I got a couple in the works that like, where I don't really know the people, but I'm familiar with their work. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That becomes a little harder, and especially it's, if yeah. it's over the phone. It's yeah. like way less personal. Yeah. You don't get that. that. You don't get that body language. You don't get a feel for the conversation. So it's, yeah. it's definitely way harder. And, you, and you're more apt to kind of like step on each other a little bit more like, you know, yeah. because you, there's no nonverbal communication going on yeah and oh, you're yeah. not looking at somebody yeah, yeah figuring yeah. out when they're going to stop talking exactly you know so yeah. that's the hard part about podcasting and just doing audio if you're doing it over the call yeah you know and i was doing that like the first couple episodes i had to edit out so much stuff because like we'd either talk over each other or like you know i would start on a new question while they're still answering the old one and yeah. it's just it was a nightmare man yeah 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 see that's the one thing I don't do is like, I don't, I don't, I don't get in there and I know some people will take out all their stammers, all their like, uh, uh, uh like what I just did. Yeah. I leave all the ugliness of my, yeah. of myself in there. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, I don't know. It's fun, man. That I love doing this shit just cause like I've said before, even when it's somebody and you, I'm sure you found this or will find it. Like even someone that's an old friend of yours, yeah. you have them on the podcast you're having a conversation, but it's it's a different it's a dynamic. Different dynamic. And you're gonna 100%. learn shit about people that you've known for a long time. Yep. And they might learn shit about you or whatever, you know, but it's it's fucking cool, man. Yeah. Like, it's 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 fun to be able and, and even people that you loosely know. Yeah. It's fun to actually sit down and have a conversation with them and talk and shoot the shit, you know, for an hour, hour and a half, whatever, however yeah. long it may be. You know, and, and I know like same thing. Like I watch other podcasts that'll go into the four fucking hour range. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know if I could ever do that. Like, yeah. I don't know if I could ever talk that long. You can, man. Like, you know, um, I've had a significant amount of mine have been like the three hour mark. Jeez. Those happen to be more, usually that's more like the in-person ones. Yeah. And um, with old friends or whatever. Of course. But, you know, a lot of times people, but that's, it's like a weird thing too, because figuring out sometimes people get... Like, oh, man, like, they're more hesitant to start listening because they're like, I don't get three hours. I'm like, break it up, motherfucker. Break it like, up, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, Listen you know, to half of it now yeah, and half yeah. of it later. I, I do that. You know what I mean? And, and I like having long form 
type open conversations because you never know where shit's going to go. It's true. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it just is what it is. And some of the podcasts I listen to, some are like an hour, some are three hours. I, I've listened to a couple of four oh, yeah. hours, but I only really listen to them when I'm like driving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I can't, I, I can't I, sit I, I listen to them. them. I listen to them like while I'm working, like at home or something yeah, like that yeah. on leather work. I'll, I'll put it on in the background. Yeah. You know, I got, dude, I, my cousins were talking to me about this psychopathic shit where they listen to podcasts that are super long at like two times speed. Oh yeah, so like they can they, get it in quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they listen to it double speed. I'm like, what do you do? like? How do you listen to that? Yeah, yeah. You know, the guy sounds like he's at the end of a fucking toy commercial or a yeah, car yeah. commercial on the radio, or or or, or 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 a pharmaceutical commercial when they go through all the oh, list of yeah, us, exactly. possible side effects. Yeah, and they start talking this fast and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's miserable. I'm yeah, like, I never do that. But I guess if you're just fucking starving for content, you 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 get it in a lot quicker. You yeah, know, you get exactly. more in. Um, but but then at what point do you become a slave to what you're trying to l listen to? You know what I mean? Yes. Like I, I don't get time for that shit. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't have time yeah. for that yeah. shit either. Fucking uh, all right, man. Well, I know you guys are probably anxious to get on the road because it's it's what time is it? You know, we're getting there. Uh, we're getting there a little late. Six thirty. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> probably got a two three hours more. Uh, yeah, it said four hours home. So, oh, maybe because of traffic. Maybe because I don't. Maybe I know I've made yeah. it to Amneville a lot quicker than that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I mean. We're we're gonna push it, so hopefully hopefully we can get home in, in two two and a half hours. Yeah, fucking you know, hit the road doing like ninety. There you go. These transit vans will handle it. <laughs> they do it, man. They do it. Um, but yeah, anything else that we even? I, I mean, I feel like that's about it. Yeah. You know? And if there's a, that's the thing. You're so close where I could just be like, you know what? I'm going off for the weekend. Yeah, come up. You know, yeah, and I yeah, come up, time. I'll ride up, I'll hang out, and we can yeah. bullshit again. Well, like I said, we get, we get Pat on here. Yeah, we got to get Pat on yeah, here. Yeah, fuck We got to yeah. get Pat on here next time. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and like I said, I'll come up there, whatever. You know, Dude, I'm up come there. come down to Long Island anytime yeah. you want. I'm up there sometimes anyway, you know, and. And like you said, you you're like two blocks from the venue that oh, we go to. Not <laughs> even, dude. Not even. I'm like I'm literally like if you're in the back of AMH, you can see my house. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you know the the just a parting note because it has to do with Amneville. Um, of course, like I had to do some tourist shit and go to the of Amneville course, Horror House. Of everybody, a Amneville Horror House. That's just like a house on a regular street. Yeah, like it's in a, a nice, neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Like. Yeah, I thought like from the movie, it seemed like the house was kind of secluded. So, so did it get developed in okay, that area so, a little so, bit more? Well, so so check this out. So, um, Ronnie DeFeo killed his family in the house. Yeah, um, there was always houses around there. Like okay. there was always houses. Like that neighborhood's been there forever. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, there were less houses back then, yeah. but there were always houses around. Yeah, you know? yeah, and. Um, Basically, the family that moved in after them said that there was, you know, there was spirits in the walls and the walls were bleeding and all this shit. They sold that story to a, to the guy that wrote the book. Yeah. The movie was based off of the book. Yeah. You know, so like there was a, a kind of a game of telephone of all this shit happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then movie after movie after sure, movie. Yeah, and yeah. it gets to the point where it's like, oh, it's a lake house. You know, there's nobody around for miles. And it's just yeah. like, nah, dude. It's like, it's you know, literally you, you, like you got a, a shared driveway yeah, with that's another what I'm saying. house. Yeah. Like you could hand a cup of sugar over to your yeah. neighbor through the windows. Yeah, you could like, literally toss, you know, yeah. a, a, a mug to yeah. your neighbor for a Yeah, it's not coffee. a secluded like lake house. Yeah, that's nah, why I was like, I, that, that's what was surprising to me. But it's funny that they left the windows, you know, because that's like yeah. the telltale well, sign of that. So they changed the windows they changed the windows a while back um to try and sell the house i believe okay and um that's that house in that neighborhood if that house didn't have the stigma to it that house would go for like eight nine hundred eight to nine hundred thousand dollars really i think it sold for like 625 like yeah. eight nine years ago yeah because yeah. just the stigma with the it stigma I mean, of the you house. know and you get people you got people coming up wanting to take photos and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, There's yeah. people that knock on the door like, I want to come inside. And yeah. the family's like, fuck off. Yeah. Oh, you fuck know? that. Oh, hell no. Like, yeah I, I, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I think you could, you know, you could take that and turn it into like a weird like Airbnb. You like, could. Thing, you know. But the town, to, the town would definitely it. shoot it down. Yeah, yeah. Nah, everybody in the neighborhood's like, yo, fuck off. Yeah. Oh, I you can know? imagine. They, they get people on the corner. There's fucking, you know, people in the neighborhood that run them off. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're calling the cops on these fucking people that are just taking pictures all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be kind of a general nuisance. You know oh, one hundred percent, especially around Halloween time. 
Oh, but it's one thing to stop and take a picture real quick. It's another thing to knock on the fucking door oh, and be like, dude, hey, can I yeah. come into your house? Yeah, there's people that snoop around the property yeah. and like shit like that. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, fuck that shit. You know? Well, you know, if, so if you go to if you go there, try by, take a picture quick. Don't bother nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be a dick. Out. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Don't be a tourist. I'm not going to lie. We took a picture. You know what I mean? Of Just course. Like, yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Of course. You got to. We weren't you know? fucking loitering and fucking. You know? uh, like, I, dude, when I went out to L.A., I took a picture. I, I showed him. He, he was out in California with me for the first time. Uh, we went past like the American Horror Story house. Okay, yeah. Uh, we went past the the Nightmare on Elm Street house. Yeah, like, we took a quick picture and yeah, then we yeah. dipped. Then you, you know, we took going, a picture yeah. from, the, from the car. And you keep it moving. Yeah, absolutely. you know, you don't get out, knock on the fucking door, being like, "Oh, what's the inside look yeah. like?" Because guaranteed, that was a movie set. They only yes. used the fucking yes. front of the house for exterior yeah. shots. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like yeah. they filmed it in the fucking house. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? yeah. Dude, same shit. Fucking Home Alone, the first Home Alone. Yeah, the exterior of the house. They only use the exterior of that house. The interior of the house was built on a set inside of a public school that was shut down. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I watched a whole documentary about yeah. it. It's crazy. They built it, the basement where the water comes up in the basement. They built yeah. that in the pool in the high school. Yeah. It's crazy how, like, I, I love, I'm a, such a fucking sucker for, like, even if it's a movie I don't give a shit about. Yeah. If someone shows you the process of how something was done, it. I fucking love watching love that shit. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, dude, that's why you, you fucking build bikes. You love yeah, the process. The process, yeah. You know? I also love, I'm a sucker for, like, the uh, documentaries about bands and, like, watching the rise of a band yes, and then the, the utter way. destruction of the band. Oh, and, like, yeah. I don't know why. It just falls apart. Yeah, and I always feel bad about it. Like, even if it's a band, I do not give a fuck about it. I just like looking at how shit comes together and how it moves because oh, it's yeah. always interesting. Because it's it, very interesting. Yeah. Well, you hell know. yeah. Well, fuck yeah, man. I'll let you guys get on the road, man. Hell I know yeah. you guys are itching. Uh, thanks again for coming out. Anytime. Um, what's the uh, social medias that people can find out more information okay. about what you're going on? Because now there's going to be like a list of 10 yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah, let me, let me fire everything <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, so you yeah. can find my personal Instagram. It's just at I am Tim Howley. Uh, I work for a company called First Manufacturing. It's just at First MFG Co. I own a company called Tombstone Hardware, uh, Thrash and Throttle Podcast, South Shore Leatherworks, uh, and I do eight million other things. So yeah, yeah. I'm sure if you if you go to my personal page, you can find all that stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, everybody knows by now that I'm in a band called Fit for an Autopsy. Yeah. So I'll you know, put, you can do all that stuff. I'll put the links to uh, all the social medias for. for for all yeah. these things in the show notes as well for, yeah. for people. So you don't have to remember it all, but just uh, click on the, the show notes and uh, you, you'll you see all that there. But yeah, man, thank you. Uh, and fucking we'll talk soon, man. Party. Absolutely. Hell yeah. If you're in business, you probably have a website, but can your site handle your growth? How many visitors before your site slows down or crashes? What about storage and data security? From web hosting to virtual servers, Pair Networks provides the online infrastructure you need to start, grow, and flourish. When it comes to security and updates, don't worry, we've got you covered. Our 24-7 U.S.-based customer support is the best in the industry. No frustrating chatbots or sitting on hold for hours. Check out Pair.com today to learn more. That's P-A-I-R dot com. You love podcasts. The stories, the laughs, the unexpected turns. But when this episode ends, the silence starts. Not anymore. Audiobooks.com turns that silence into your next great adventure. With over 450,000 titles, from bestsellers to hidden gems, your love for listening just found its new best friend. And because you already know the joy of audio, we're giving you three free audiobooks to start your journey. Imagine your favorite podcast, now with unlimited episodes. That's audiobooks.com. Keep the story going. Sign up for your free trial at audiobooks.com slash podcast free today. Because for podcast lovers like you, the end of an episode is just the beginning. That's audiobooks.com slash podcast F-R-E-E.